I tell you right now, those guys ain't afraid of no coronavirus right there. Man, they're jumping over fences and stuff, man. They don't care. They don't care about any of that. <laughs> I couldn't. I, the very first thing you have to say, really, the very first, the very first is that, hold on. I'm almost ready to start preaching. Hang on a second. I got my, uh, I don't want you guys to catch anything, so we're going to just start right there. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Come on, can we give it up for all of our visitors just one more time? Everybody visiting online, everybody visiting here in person. I'm so, so glad you guys are here. I'll take a minute to introduce myself. My wife, Tiffany, and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Give it up for yourselves because you're awesome, and we love you too. Awesome. That was a golf clap for yourself. You can do better. You guys are amazing. Give it up. Oh, my bad. You guys came ready. You guys preach today? This is good. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. I believe that, that God has a message of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to deliver straight into your life today. In these times that can be tough, God has something very special. It's a funny thing because we're doing this series called Fearless, and um, sometimes people ask me as a, as a preacher, um, as kind of like a spirit-filled kind of guy, and they're like, don't it doesn't God ever like just change your plans at the last minute and change your message at the last minute? And I never knew how to answer that before, but now I'm thinking, man, if he's in the planning, he doesn't need to change the plan later. It's like, we decided on this series months ago, he knew exactly what he was doing. You don't need to change the plan if he made the plan. So it's good. It's good. I didn't even have to like change my message. I got you covered. He's got a message of hope, encouragement, and love he wants to deliver into your life today. And if you believe that with me, come on, say amen, everybody. Say amen. Amen activates our faith and, and says, let it be done. Let it be done. I, I want a message of hope, encouragement, and love spoken into my life. So I'm going to say amen just to, just to let that be done. Again, uh, I know that many of you are tuning in online today, and so I want to just take another moment to acknowledge you, to welcome you. Come on, everybody. Can we just welcome everybody one more time? They're clapping for you out there. They're clapping for you. I don't know if you can hear them or not, but they're doing it. They're glad you're joining us. Yeah, there you go. Come on. Come on. Uh, for everyone joining us online, everyone here, we've got some bulletin notes that you can follow along with. We also have the U version. Uh, Bible app, the YouVersion Bible app, which is a little brown, it's the little brown Bible. If you just type Bible into that um, um, app store, or uh, if you're a, an appropriate iPhone or a user, you know, it'd be, the, it'd be the Play Store, the Play Store. That's where I like to get my apps from because I'm an Android user, like, like an upstanding citizen. Just saying, just saying. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's get some, let's get some, let's take sides. <laughs> That's a good thing to do. Awesome. Way to go, Pastor. You're doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> doing a great job today. All right, all right. Our mission around here is to be a lifeline by leading people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. Our way of, of helping people do that is to help people know God, uh, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. That's our plan for doing it. And we just have something for you today. I, I believe this message has a real opportunity to, to, to change some lives. So last week we started, we started this series called Fearless, and we talked about how, how freedom in Jesus is the first way that we can attain fearlessness. Is when we're free, we talked about this, we're free in Jesus when we become like a slave to him. If that doesn't make any sense to you, I would, I would encourage you, go back on our YouTube channel, go back on Facebook, and find out kind of what that means. Like when I fully and totally submit to Jesus, even though it sounds like, well, that's not freedom, but it really is. It really is freedom because we're all submitted to something and you are a bad leader for your own life. <laughs> we need better than that. We want better than that. And the first way to attain fearlessness is to really find freedom in Jesus. We talked about that last week and we started this series that, that basically is preaching through Philippians 4, which says, always be full of the joy of the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Say it with me, rejoice. rejoice. Rejoice, man, he's like really helping us. He's really wanting us to do this. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Man, <laughs> come on, Paul, you didn't know like we were gonna go through things. He said, don't worry about anything. Just pray about everything. You don't need to worry about everything. You can, you, can, you can just pray about everything. It says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Basically put, 
Joy is a choice. The, the Bible is telling us, God is telling us, Jesus is telling however you want to look at it, it's like, hey, everybody, here's a life of joy. Choose it. It is your choice to make, that we actually choose joy. Jo a joyful life is not something that just happens to you. You show up to church and it's like pixie dust. I am a jo I've just got joy of the Lord now. No, no. Joy is something you have to choose on a regular basis. Anybody who knows what I'm talking about knows that that's true, man, that we, every day, we're faced with obstacles and, and opportunities to say, nope, I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to choose the smile. I'm going to choose the smile to that, that checker. I'm going to choose the smile to that person trying to sell me toilet paper right now. They ain't happy, and I'm not happy either, but you know what? I'm going to choose joy. I'm going I'm to choose it. Joy is a choice. So that's the first blank in your bulletin is choose joy. Be fearless. Being fearless is a choice that you make. And if you think it's something that's like outside of you, just happens to you, no, 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 no. That's not how that works at all. Next week, I don't want you to miss this. Um, Pastor Tiffany is going to be bringing the word next week. Come on, who's excited for that? <laughs> Tiffany is amazing. Um, she is so powerful when she speaks, so powerful. Most people that have actually stuck around at this church, they, their story goes, yeah, Tiffany was preaching that week. So I'm like thinking, hmm, maybe we ought, she ought to preach more often. I don't know, but because she, somebody said amen to that. Yeah, she should. She should. From Frustrated to Fearless is the title of her message, From Frustrated to Fearless, talking about how we can be so frustrated, so stuck in life sometimes. You ever felt that way? Come on, show of hands. Anybody ever felt stuck or frustrated ever once in your life? Don't lie to me. This is a place. This is a, this is a church here. You can't lie. I know you have. And She's going to talk about how we can go from frustrated to fearless, talking about the life of Elijah. It's actually really powerful. You're not going to want to miss that at all, from frustrated to fearless. Okay, today, 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 I want to give you a secret weapon for fear. I want to give you a secret weapon for fear, so, something that you had no idea. You had no idea this existed. I'm telling you right now, you didn't know. You didn't know this was available. It's a, it's a secret weapon. It's the death blow to fear. It's like Superman's kryptonite. We just didn't know. All you have to do is know about it, and you'd be like, oh, right here, boo, fear goes down. It's a secret weapon that I want to give you. It's just, mm, it's, it's kind of like, how can I explain it to you? We all make mistakes sometimes. Isn't that true? Come on. We all make mistakes sometimes, like forgetting to wash our hands. Nobody's forgetting to wash their hands right now. That is one part of this message I could have took out. Because that does, you're like, no, I did not. I did not. It smells like air freshener. It smells like bacteria cleaner in here right now. No one forgot to wash their hands. But, but think way back to when before anybody was thinking about any of that. So, sometimes you forget. Don't lie to me. Don't, you can't lie to me. I know you forget sometimes. But here's the thing about this secret weapon I'm going to share with you. It's kind of like that. It's, it's, it's so available. It's so readily available to us. It's like a free gift. It's right there. All we got to do is use it. But if we don't use it, nothing happens. All we got to do is remember to use it. It's easy to do. And other times, it's easy to forget. I'm talking about the word. I'm talking about the Bible today. Today, we're going to talk about being faithfully fearless. And we're going to talk about faith to this word and how we can pour this into our life on a regular basis. But we can just forget sometimes because we're, as we're going to discuss Man, it's just, it's so there. It's so right there. If it's around me, it must be in me, right? No, no, that's not how that works. That would be like, I'm clean. You know, I just got this in my pocket. That, that cleans my hands. No, I got to actually apply it. I've got to actually use it. It's better than soap, y'all. It doesn't just kill 99.9% .9 of darkness. 100%, 100%. Complete success rate if you apply it to your life. You see where I'm going now. Even Jesus used this word of God to fight off the devil three different times. The devil's waited. Oh, he just waited. And sometimes the enemy waits for you to be in a vulnerable position to where you're, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you're going through a hard time. And then he creeps, he slithers in there. Hey, but why don't you just do this? You didn't know I could make a snake sound like that. That's pretty. I didn't know either. I'm actually just nervous. <laughs> He slithers in there. He slithers in there. He's like, why don't you do this? And Jesus said, no, but the word says. No, but the word said. And, and, and the devil kept coming at him three different times. And he said, no, the word said, the word said, the word said. It's a secret weapon. It's our secret weapon. When we're faced with fear, when we're faced with struggles, when we're faced with trials, it's our secret weapon. Can I be honest with you, though, for, 
for just a second, as if I'm not being honest the whole time. <laughs> it's just an expression. But I want to be—I want to be vulnerable with you for a moment. I had a pretty bad week this week, truthfully, um, and it has nothing to do with all of this. It was like a personal thing in my family. Um, Tuesday was a really bad day. It was a really bad day. And it was before, like, the whole stuff came. I'm, I'm telling you, it's something, I can't tell you exactly what it was about because I'll tell you stories about it probably a year from now because pastors are story fiends. We look for them everywhere, and it's like, oh, yeah. But it's so fresh. I just, what I want to share with you is that it was, I got some really bad news on Tuesday. And I just, all day long, I just sat on my couch and was like, all bummed out, <laughs> kind of sad. And you know what I was feeling? I was feeling afraid, stressed, and anxious. <laughs> Wait a minute, where have I heard those words a lot lately? Oh yeah, I'm preaching a series on how to not face those things. And there I was, there I was. Because a lot of people think pastors uh, just float in on their cloud, you know. Oh, Monday through Saturday, we like, you know, on our cross leg, we got our cloud and we're like, we float in, float in, and then we say some inspirational things on Sunday, and then we like, get back on the cloud and we just float around. No, 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 no. Uh, we got some straight real life problems, you know, and real things that we face too. So I want to, for the rest of the day, let you know, this is what I do. The secret weapon is what I use. This is how I deal with my fear. This is how I deal with my anxiety. This is how I deal with my stress. And it was a stressful week. And I got to it's like God said, yeah, well, I want you to come from a place of experience on this one. So I am coming from a place of experience on this one. The answer to, to becoming fearless, secret weapon number two, last week was number one, today's number two, is putting the right practices that defend us against fear, anxiety, and stress. And this is what God told Joshua, a man named Joshua. We're going to be in Joshua today if you want to follow along in your Bible. Joshua 1, starting in verse 5. This is what God told Joshua. This is what... This is what I do, and this is what I'm sharing with you, what I, what I would love for you to do to beat fear in your life. Joshua 1, starting in verse 5, he says this, no one, say no one, no, no one, say it loud like you mean it, no one. will be able to stand against you. No one will be able to stand against you. Ooh, I love, just stay right there all day. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. That, my wife complains all the time. I use absolutes always. I'm always using absolutes. And I tell her, I never use absolutes. Not ever. I have never, ever once used an absolutes. You are always exaggerating. But really, what I feel like I'm doing, I'm, I'm just being more like my heavenly father. He's absolutes. He loves using absolutes. In fact, you could say he always used absolutes because every time he speaks, it's true every single time. I want to be more like my father in heaven. So I want to say things that are absolutely true every time. Like when he says, no one will stand against you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. My promises always come to pass. Those who stand on my truth will never be shaken. Not 99.9% .9 of the time, but 100% of the time, I am always going to be there for you. He doesn't say, maybe sometimes oh well well not if that one thing happens no always always Ooh. always no one will stand against you he will never leave you he will never abandon you he will never forsake you he goes on to say this this is what you do be strong be courageous look i'm always going to be with you but then god says to joshua and i would i would argue he says to us be strong. Be courageous. You are the ones. Listen, you are the ones who will lead these people. You, have you been called a leader lately? Because one thing, I, I have a degree in leadership and ministry. When I went to Bible college, that's what my degree is in, is leadership and ministry. You want to know like the, <laughs> all that money and all that time later, you want to know what I learned? Leadership is simply influence, and we all have it. We all have influence. We all, whether it's your family, your friends, your coworkers, you have influence. And, and God is saying, God is saying, no, you're the one. He didn't say your pastor's the one. He didn't say your grandma is going to be the one that prays them in. No, he said you're going to be the one to lead these great people of mine. You're going to be the one to lead these people to possess all the land. I, see, there he is again. I swore I would give you this land. 
My promises are yes and amen. I swore it, but I'm going to use you to do it. That's powerful. That's powerful. We, we, if our eyes are open to it, we can see how God throughout his word is saying, no, I, I want you to do this for the benefit of others. This is not for you. Look, you got a great gift, but I gave you that gift not to hoard that gift. I gave you this gift to give it away. It's for the benefit of others. If our eyes are open to it, we can see how over and over again, he's telling us, man, be with people. Care about people. Be in groups of people where you are speaking life into each other, speaking truth into each other. He's, if I could be so bold, I'd say he's talking about life groups. The place where we can take the mask off with people and say, this is the real me. Can you handle it? And, and they can where people with you take off their masks and say, well, this is what I'm really dealing with. Man, on Sundays, man, you're just not always going to be able to have that. That's not the way God made us to, hey, everybody, like 150 people, oh, okay, here I, no. God made us to, to operate like this. We're going to lead from our influence, and we're going to be together with one another. He's saying, man, meet with each other. Even the model that we're given in Acts is they met in the temple regularly, but then what they do? They met from house to house all throughout the week. Man, I, it's not just me saying life groups. God is saying get together in groups of people. Our groups are starting up actually really soon. They're starting in April. We've got a whole bunch to choose from. They're not already, all of them aren't even in yet. We've got over a dozen to choose from. I want to encourage you, don't miss out on this because you are just missing out yourself, not only for yourself, but for those that you're going to speak into, for those that you're going to bless. For those that you're going to be available to, God said, you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I promised to them. It's not optional or a good suggestion. God calls us. God calls us to do this. And then he goes on to say this. He says it again. Be strong and very courageous. Verse 7. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate them, turning either to the right or to the left. And you, ooh, you will be successful in everything you do. Come on, somebody say everything. everything. Say everything. everything. Everything you do. Hold up. Let's go back on that verse one more time and just look at it a little closer. Because wait a minute. To be successful in everything I do, be strong, courageous, and be careful to obey all the instructions that Moses gave you. Do not deviate them. Mm. Then I will be successful in all that I do. It's, it's like mom. You know, she, she used to say, wash your hands, honey. <laughs> Don't forget, you come out of the bag when you were a kid. Come on, wash your hands, honey. Don't forget to wash your hands, honey. Don't forget. Don't forget. Every time, honey, keeps the germs off, honey. It's like, it's like God saying, listen to my word, darling. <laughs> Look at my word, honey. My mom used to call me honey. Sorry, as I'm coming out right now. That's, those are good times, mom. I hope you're watching. Uh, those were good times, honey, honey. But it's like God is like reminding us, you know, because sometimes we hear something over and over again, and we just kind of tune it out. Mom. I know. And then you like turn the water on. Don't do anything. You turn it off again. You're like, I did, mom. You like check in to the YouVersion Bible app and you like scroll, 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 done. I did, God. I did. I read it. I read it, mom. I mean, father. <laughs> but sometimes, I mean, we, we need to take this advice. Not sometimes. We, we need to listen to God when he says, everything you do, you will prosper and succeed in everything you do if you just do this. Repetition and instruction and routine makes us successful in everything we do when we're right here with it, when we're right here with it. And here's the answer. Here's the answer I really want to give you um, out of today. This whole message is basically talking right here in verse 8. Joshua 1, 8. Maybe you've heard it before. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing it, but this is really powerful. He says, study this book of instruction continually continually. And then this word, meditate. Meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in everything you do. He's very repetitive in these, in these verses. You can tell that he's trying to get something through to us. You've got to be in this word. And we're talking about being fearless. And this applies. This applies. Uh, I want to tell you about that word, meditate, because I don't know if you knew this, but the, the Bible wasn't written in English. Another thing I learned in Bible college, it's actually, sh should be common knowledge, but let me just inform you, the, the Bible was written in three different languages, Hebrew, a little bit of Aramaic, 
and Greek, okay? And this passage right here is written in Hebrew. So this word that they translated meditate is haga. <laughs> you want to try it with me? Haga. Haga. Yeah, it's, it, they translated it meditate. And here's the problem. When most of us think meditate, what do you think? Um, you know, like, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it really good. I'm going to think about it. It's going to be great. But this word, can I, can I tell you what, what the Bible dictionary describes haga? The way it's translated right here, it means this, to mutter, to read in an undertone, to speak, to proclaim, to ponder by talking to yourself. It, it has a, it's this, say it, meditate on it, day and night, say it. Keep it on your lips. Keep saying it over yourself. You know how you're full of something? Not that. Come on, lifeline, chill. When you're full of something and, and, and you get applied pressure, whatever you're full of will kick out of your mouth. The mouth is like the opening. It's like, so if you're full of something else and, and pressure, like you get under pressure and something squeezes you, whatever's inside of you is going to come out. That's why some people under pressure, you see their true colors. Other people, other people, oh, I'm not talking about anybody here. Probably someone online, though. No, you know what I mean? But if we fill ourselves up here, if we f fill ourselves like full right here and, and pressure gets applied to us, what's going to come out? Oh, my, my God has me. My God has me. His promises are yes and amen. And I'm talking about more than Sunday mornings. As much as I love you guys being here on Sunday mornings, I love it. It's great. It's a wonderful time. But we, it, it takes more than that we, to be full of something. Like when you're filling up your gas tank, Matt, how do you know it's really full? Because it clicks. No, mine clicks like 10 times before it's full. Don't you hate that? Is anybody, does that just happen to me? It's like one gallon. No, gosh. And now I have to tip it over and I have to hold the thing back. Only like three of you are laughing. The rest of you have decent cars probably. It's okay. But how, if you really, if there was no filter on it, how would you know that that thing was full? Because it would kick out the mouth. Gas would kick out of the mouth. That's how you know it's full. That's what God is saying. You get full of my word by meditating on it. Meditate. Take it in and just, it should be flowing. That's, that's, the, that's the ticker. That's how you know. All you do. You know, I looked up also all you do, that you'll be successful in all you do. And I was like, surely he doesn't mean all you do. And I looked it up. Sure enough, it means all you do. I didn't need a Bible dictionary that time. It, they actually translated it very well. It means everything. Everything you put your hand on. It, this, this applies to every single area of your life. But what we'll find out is I'm not asking you to check your brain. God is actually asking us, no, I want you to process this. I want you to understand it. I want you to dig deep into it. I want you to think about this. Some people think they come in and they think churches and, and pastors are asking people to just check, check your brain at the door, everybody. You know, just be, be faithful. You don't understand. You never will. Just be faithful. No, he did not. He did not say that. There are some things, yeah, that are hard to grasp. But you know what else? He built us with a brain. <laughs> so I think he wants us to maybe use it. Yeah, that's a good thing. He wants us to go into our word using what he gave us, our mind, our brain, our thinking. And, and this is really, this is really the, the main point. If there's only one point that you remember, it's in your bulletin, it's everything else. And this is what I want you to remember is God's word washes out worry. It, it washes it out. God's word washes out worry. It's like displacement. You know, it's like the more word you put into you, the more everything else, all that fear, all that worry, all that doubt, all that stress, all that anxiety, more God's word you put inside of you, the more that stuff is going to get forced out. It'd be coming out your ears, coming out your nose, but what be coming out your mouth is God's promises, God's faithfulness, God's goodness. He's for you, not against you. That's a great place to say amen right there, church. I'm teaching you. That's a great place. It's like, it's like soap, you know. Um, some places don't have it. God's word is like soap, and, and it's true, some places don't have it. And if you don't have access to soap, the spread of disease and infection is pretty much assured because they don't have soap, just like God's word. If we don't, if we don't have it, if we don't use it, um, the spread of uh, infectious thinking, the spread of, of wrong action and wrong response is almost assured. 
if we don't have what we need, which in this case, I'm using the analogy of soap. And just like soap, some places, some people don't know how to use it. You know, like I was describing to you earlier, it's like, oh, this is stuff, this stuff is weird. That's not how it works. Like if I get some soap in my hands and I'm like, just get done using the bathroom and I'm like, soap, soap, soap. Ah, no, that's, that is not how it works. That if you don't know, how, just like soap, if you don't know how to use, if you don't know how to apply God's word to your life in the right places and at the right times. When's the right time to use soap? After you use the bathroom. Where's the right place to put the soap? On your hands. And don't forget your fingertips, everybody. Okay, Dr. Drew, thank you for that. Dr. Drew, okay, fingertips. Wash those fingertips, that helps too. But that's the right place to apply. God's word is the same. If we don't apply it at the right time and in the right way, we could find ourselves being like, well, pastor said I just need to do it, so we just flip it open and boom, random verse. That's my verse of the day. No, that, that's, that, no. You, you know that um, we live in a great time where if you have a struggle with fear, you can actually look in your concordance or you can Google scriptures on fear and brrr, you get them all at the right time and at the right place. You can apply God's word at the right time and in the right manner, just like soap. And it's, Oh, here's one. God's word is like soap. Some cultures have so much of it, they just ignore it. Oh, man. That, and I think that's kind of, it's just everywhere. It's just everywhere. It's like I could go to In-N-Out and I could get scripture on my French fry bag. Did you ever know it was there? I just seen it's like this little tiny things like Genesis something. I never even looked it up. I'm just like, it's everywhere. It's on the bottom of the little cup. It's, it's everywhere. Thank you for that. Someone knows. They're like, I'll be reading it. Pastor, let me tell you, I'll be reading it. It's everywhere. We've, we've got a thousand translations on our phone for free. I've got scripture on my in and out garbage. I go into some establishments, Christian music is playing. It's, it's very close to me just walking and be like, oh, it's all around me. I don't need to, I don't need to use it. I don't need to like, because it's like I go in places and I hear the Christian music. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I've got a Bible. Yeah, it's collecting dust on my nightstand, but you know, it's there. That's good. And I hear scriptures every now and then. You know, I follow people on Facebook and they post a scripture or two. You know, I'm good. No, some cultures have so much of something that we neglect it. It's in so much abundance. God's word is in so much abundance. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. I mean, we could tune in. I could, I could watch like a bajillion awesome messages, better than this one I'm preaching right now, right now. I could go home and I could watch the best preaching that's ever been available on demand. And I could, I could hear it. Have you ever read the Bible in the, in the Hawaiian pidgin language? It's amazing. You should try it. You should. That's a side point. I'm, I'm getting way off course now. God's word is like soap. Some places we just got so much of it. And this is kind of what I wanted to, to show you today because I wanted you to see this, and I don't want you to forget this. Um, for our online visitors, if you could kind of see this. This, this, uh, this cup, this is like our soul, okay? It's an empty vessel. Uh, whatever comes our way, we get filled up with. So I'm going to go ahead and say that most of us got a little bit of darkness coming. This grape juice is going to be like, you know, everything that we kind of see or taking in, social media, the news, negativity. Let's talk about some, like, even legitimate health concerns you might have. Legitimate, like I had this last week. Legitimate stuff that's just weighing you down. And look how murky. It's so dark. This is something that, that is, a, is a big problem. That we, we can walk around like this and we're just kind of dark. You, you, you ever felt that way? Maybe you see somebody that's like, man, you look like you full of grape juice. No, you never said that. That's, that makes sense. You probably shouldn't do that. that make, that's like a weird thing. That probably means something I don't even know about because I'm old now. But there's a few different ways. Okay, so um, this right here, this cool, clean, clear water, this is the word. This is God's truth. This is, is mm, I just want to take a drink right now. It's so good. But that's that's really what I want to describe to you is that there's, there's different ways that all of us, let me point this so everybody can see it. There's different ways that, that we can choose to, 
to, to take in God's word. And this is, a, this is an eyedropper. <laughs> this is how a lot of us are like, I'm good. And we take a little water out of there and we're like, verse of the day. <laughs> and we're like, ooh, you know, I, I got K-Love programmed into my car. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's, hey, don't get me wrong either. A little bit is better than nothing. Don't mishear me. Like a verse of the day can really make a big difference at the right time, at the right moment. But as like your go-to response, man, um, it's like, uh, I feel a little bit better, but the overall condition of my life hasn't really changed. The overall condition of my heart hasn't really changed. And then so some of us, we go through some other things. And so we have one of these. It's called the cleanse. You know, when we go through something hard, some of you are asking, what is a pastor doing with a shot glass right now? OMG. Why does he even have one of those? He shouldn't be drinking. I don't drink, everybody, okay? I used to drink a lot, a lot, so you can't surprise me. What am I even doing with this? What does it even say on it? The vows are done. It's time for fun. <laughs> this came out of my own. <laughs> what am I doing with this? Like, somebody got this for me. And I've kept it for almost eight years now. That's crazy. This is not the funny part of the message. <laughs> Cleanse. This is method number two. Uh, we go through something hard, and it's like, oh my gosh, a virus. Oh my gosh, something's happening to me. Oh my gosh, I just lost my job. Oh my gosh, you know, depending on what we go through, we're, and we're like, oh my goodness, I need to whack. I need something fast, short, and and I need, it to, uh, I need it to hit me really fast. So we take the shot glass approach. But as you can see, it's better than a verse of the day. Maybe you read like three chapters in a row and you're like, yeah, I'm feeling spiritual. Yeah, I read three chapters. Anybody need prayer? Right now, I got you. I got you because I am filled with the spirit today. And you took a shot, but it was like one and done. And you're, you're that, we need more because as you can see, this makes very little difference in our lives. So, so what do we need? What's, what am I saying? What I'd like for us to do, because there is an unlimited source. There is an unlimited flow. But what we need is consistency. We need constant flow. We need to just pour this thing until eventually, over time, things begin to clear up. Don't worry about that. <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got damage control. As you can see, as you can see, it's, it's through a steady flow, a consistent approach daily. Man, this word of God is coming into my life in a steady flow every day, not just when I need it, but I want to be ready when I do. Can I get an amen on that? Man, because we don't want to just respond. We don't want to have to try and catch up when disaster comes our way. No, we want to be ready because when pressure comes, it's too late to start filling because you're already squeezed, nothing's going in. You're, you're not receptive. We need to get full of God's word on the front end of things. And that starts right now. That starts, that starts today. So what I wanna give you, I, I, wanna, I wanna give you these four steps on how to use God's word like soap. <laughs> You'd think I wrote this for today. you think I wrote this for like some, but no, it was already gonna be this. Can you believe that? God is so funny. He is so funny. God's word like soap. Are you ready for it? Four things that should be happening, because right now all I've told you to do is just read it a whole bunch, but I haven't given you tools to how to do it. What I want to spend the rest of our time with is, is what you should be doing while you're in this thing, whether it's a chapter a day, three chapters a day. My prescription is about three chapters a day is a really healthy dose. You could definitely do more, but less than that, you might be finding yourself running a little dry. But here it goes, and it's an acronym, S-O-A-P. And the first, the S stands for this, identify a scripture. So when you're reading your Bible, you got your Bible open, you're going through the chapter, you're going through your chapters, what you need to be doing, and this is, this is what I've been doing for years, you got your eyes peeled for a verse. You got your eyes peeled, it's not, even, it's not always just a verse, maybe it's a string of verses. Maybe it's even partially a verse. And some of you are like, oh my God, blasphemy, how dare he? But let me tell you something. Um, Guys like, like me put verses and chapters in later, so it's not blasphemy to leave them out, okay? As long as it's a complete thought or a sentence, that might work too. You, I want you to look for a scripture, something that jumps out at you. God will help you. 
He really will. If, you're, if your mind and heart is open to it, he will help you, and he will point something out. You'll read something and go, oh, yeah, that's, and it gives you pause. Found it. Found it. And I want you to underline it. I want you to circle it. I want you to highlight it. Some of you are like, blasphemy again. Write it down in a notebook then if you don't want to scratch up your Bible. I get it. It's fine. You can do that. You can make a Google Doc on your phone. I do all of my reading digital. I just lost like half of the people listening to me. They're like, how dare he? Not even a paper Bible. I do it digitally. I use my Bible software. It's called Logos. And I have all of my notes and stuff. So every time I'm reading through, I see everything. And I, write, I type it out because I'm not a very fast writer. I'm like missing fingers and stuff. So I don't like... So typing is hard too, but you know, I get by how, the best I can, all right? Identify a scripture. You got that first one? Identify a scripture. The next point is this. I want you to observe, observe what's happening. It's, it's simpler than it sounds. I want you to observe what's happening. In regular conversation, when you want to show somebody, hey, I understand what you were just saying. What do you do? You say, so in other words, what you're saying is, it's like when Tiffany says to me, do you smell something? I look at her and say, so what you mean is you want me to check Evan's diaper. That's what you mean. <laughs> you, when you want to tell someone, show someone that you understand what they're saying, you say, so in other words, what, you, what you're trying to say is, and that's what I want you to do. I want you to either jot it down in your notes, jot it down on your little document. It doesn't have to be complicated, but just put it in your own words. What is this verse saying in my own words. Imagine that you were going to explain it to one of your simple friends. Maybe you are the simple friend. <laughs> I feel for you. I feel for you. Just put it in a way that you understand. Okay, the verse says this. In other words, he's saying this. You're, you're, you're using this thing God gave you. You're using this brain God built you with. It's a good thing. I want you to observe what's happening, okay? The next one is where it gets fun. I want you to, A, apply it to your life. Apply it to your life. I want you to connect the dots. Because until we connect the dots to what Scripture says about our life and put it to practice in our life, that's where the magic happens. You can read this thing till you're blue in the face. You know who knows the Bible way better than you? The devil. What does he not do, though? Live by it. It's simple. When we connect the dots to what Scripture says and actually position our lives to reflect that and connect those dots, that's where the magic happens. That's where the magic happens. So take this from me. Apply it to your life means this. If this, then that. If this, then that. All the computer programmers are like, oh, I get that. That makes sense to me. If this, then that. Uh, for example, I got actually a scripture for you on this. Uh, for example, in the Bible says in Deuteronomy 15.10, it says, Give generously and do not let your heart be grieved when you do so. And because of this, the Lord will bless you in all your work. The Lord will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand. If this. So if I'm struggling financially, if this, I'm going to look for ways to be generous than that. It's, a, it's an application, people. It works. If this, then that. If this, then that. That's what application means. I'm going to actually find a way, and maybe it could even be more direct than that. Like, today I am going to. I did that for a long time. I've been doing this. It's actually on the back of your, of your handout. Um, this is one of my soap journals from years ago. I've been doing this for a really long time. And this is one of mine. Don't judge me on this, all right? It was a long time ago, all right? So maybe I got some things wrong, but it works for me, okay? This is kind of what it looks like. And, and, and this passage right here, this one in Deuteronomy, it just makes sense to say, okay, if, if I'm struggling financially, if I have a, a burden or an issue with stress and with money, the word says that I should be generous, so maybe I'll just do that. Okay, application. You're using your brain. You're using your mind. If this, then that. The last one is powerful, and it says this. Pray it over your life. This is a neglected step, but this also is where powerful things happen. Pray it over your life. Remember, remember what was said in Joshua 1.8? He says, meditate on this word. Meditate on it day and night. And we learned that it's not just thinking about it. It's speaking it. And this is where the rubber meets the road, because you can, you can, you can read something, 
You can observe something about it, and you can write down an application and even try and put it into practice over your life, but there's something magical that happens. Let me just explain it to you out of a story, because Tiffany and I did this when we struggled. Uh, we were struggling with finances a few years ago. We were struggling with finances at the church and personally, and we were just thinking, man, we're just going through these certain troubles. That's kind of why I'm staying on the topic of finances, because I've been through something personally on this. And what we did was we put scriptures on little three by five cards. You know, it's like, you know, the little index cards. And we wrote out a bunch of financial scriptures all over the, all, and we put it on the front door. I put it on the back door. I, I put it on my, my bathroom mirror. I put it above my bed. You know, I'm like looking up and there it is right there. I put it on the little headboard. I put it all over the place. And what I would do is this. Every time I walked by one of those scriptures, I'd pray it. Like one of the financial scriptures is, is Philippians 4.19. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Jesus Christ. And I would, I would walk by that and I would go, Lord, you're going to meet all my needs according to his glorious riches. You're going to meet all my needs. And I would pray the reality of it over my life. And this is what I want you to do. As you're as you're reading your Bible, as you're taking these notes, because this is not just science, this is heart. You know, this is not just a how-to. This is something that you, you've got to own it here. You've got to say it. You've got to own it. It's like over this scripture, uh, Deuteronomy 15.10, Lord, help me to be generous. Lord, I believe the word is true. You take care of me when I'm generous. God, help me overcome doubt in the area of finances, health, and my relationships. This is why the SOAP method is so powerful. It takes us through all the things that we need to be doing when we're reading our Bibles that actually leads us to a life of faith. To where we say, no, I know this word is true over my life. And I'm going to speak it as it's true. There's a difference between praying, Lord, help me win the lottery. And Lord... You said, you said when I did this, you would do that. Let me tell you something true. God responds to his word. And, and in the Bible, we see examples. And I'm telling you, this is true. We, we remind God of his own word. God, you would let no disease befall me. God, you would, you would protect my borders. God, you said, you said, praying his word is powerful. And I don't know if you're new in the faith, maybe you've been walking with Jesus a really long time, and this, this can be a game changer. But it starts with knowing. We have to know what his promises are. Man, what if, what if there was a verse for everything we could possibly go through? What if there was a verse for everything? What if every time we faced a battle, we would say, Romans 8, 37, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is mine through Christ who loves me. Every time we're dealing with a battle in our finances, we would say, no, Philippians 4, 19 says, God will meet all of my needs according to his glorious riches, which have been given to us through Christ Jesus. What if every time we were afraid, we prayed this, and we prayed Psalm 27, 1, and said, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? No one and nothing. Whom shall I fear? No one and nothing. What if every time we faced an illness, hello, hello, illness? What if every time we faced an illness, we would say Psalm 103.3, he forgives all my sins and heals me of every disease heals me of every disease. What if every time we needed confidence, we could say 2 Corinthians 3, 6, such confidence, I, I have confidence through Christ Jesus before God. What if every time we needed safety in our life, we would pray Psalm 121, verse 8, that says, the Lord keeps watch over me as I come and as I go, both now and forever. Come on, somebody. That's a great place to say amen, because God has a promise over every area of your life. Every struggle, every challenge that you're facing, he's got something for you. Man, maybe you just didn't know it. Maybe you just didn't know. And if you didn't know, oh, it's a good day today because he's got you. He's got you. You've got to own it. You've got to believe it and say, no, this is true over my life. This is true. That's what I love about this method, man. It brings us all the way to this place where we say it. God, I know you've got me covered. 
God, I know you have me covered. I know you have my back. And here's the, here's the deal, everybody. It's 100% free. <laughs> you don't have to pay for this. It's 100% free, and it works every single time. It's like zero down, 0.0% interest for a million jillion years. It's a free gift that you just get to have. Listen, everybody, it costs you nothing, but it also will cost you everything. Here's what I mean. It's going to cost you your old way of thinking. It's going to cost you all of those things you used to believe over your life. It's going to cost you hanging on to those lies that have been spoken over you. It's going to cost you your old lifestyle. So it's free, but it's also going to cost you your old life, your old ways. The old way of saying, no, I'm going to, I'm going to deal with this situation that way. I'm going to deal with that situation this way. It's, it, it's, it's free to say, no, the word is my lamp. It's a lamp to my path. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I don't lean on my own understanding. In all of my ways, I acknowledge him. In all of my ways, I acknowledge him. He directs my path. It's free. It's for all. It's for you. And it's a free gift that I'd love for you to receive today. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you grateful and thankful that everyone here has an open heart and open mind, that I believe in faith, that everyone listening online, everybody here in the house today would just be open to receive the free gift of Jesus Christ today. Lord, you paid for every, every sin, every mistake. Some of us in the room, we used to be close with you, but we're not where we know we should be, and we want to get closer today. In light of everything going on, we know that we, we want to be as close to you as humanly possible and I just want to reorient my life to you God and maybe that's your prayer you want to reorient your life to God and some of you here today you've never even heard the gospel that way and you, you don't you you've never had a relationship with him like that and I want to give you an opportunity too for the very first time to say Jesus I give everything to you so with heads down and eyes closed whether you want to give your life to Jesus for the very first time and say Lord I believe your word is true and I want to step out in faith to receive it. Or whether you know you, you went off, off track, off path, but you're ready to come home. I got good news for you. The Father's been waiting for you. Anxious, anxious, not out of stress, but he's been waiting for you to come back. He is not going to hold anything over your head. He loves you, and he's been waiting for this moment for you to return so he can say, son, daughter, I love you, and I've missed you, and I want to be near you only. Let me put this ring on your finger. Let me wash you up because we're going to have a feast, and we're going to celebrate this thing right now. Come on, everybody. Let's go. And if that's you today, I would encourage you to just lift your hand up. Go ahead. Do it right now. Say, God, I want to give everything to you. Amen. I see your hand. Go ahead. You can do it. Amen. I see your hand right here. I see your hand right here. I see your hand too. And God sees you. And God is saying, yes, come to me all. You are weary and have burdens. Anybody who is struggling, anyone who has issues, you can come to me freely and I will meet you with no judgment and everything's going to change. Everything's going to change right now. Church, can we pray this prayer together? And let's pray this, this prayer of salvation to give everything we have over to God. Come on, church, let's say it together. Father God, I give you everything. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for my sins. Guide me. Fill me with your spirit. Show me the way. I give you everything. All my mistakes, all my victories, it's all yours, God. Help me be fearless with faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen.